Hi, my name is Justin and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at Falling Down by the Goo Dolls and I think it's a good example of how one guitar can sound really big in the context of a power trio. Now, with one guitar player in the band, the role of the guitar is to fill in as much melodic and harmonic content as possible. And John Zestin achieves this through a number of techniques which I will show you in a second. So, the song Falling Down is in the key of E major, so it's a relatively simple key. Your chords are as follows. C sharp minor, B, A, and E. Now, if I were to play the introduction chords just the way they are, without any of the harmonic techniques that John Sesson uses, it actually sounds pretty boring. It sounds like this. can immediately think of you know innumerable pop examples out there that sound just like that. But the way John Zesnick approaches these chords is he fills in the gap uh, to make the, the chord sound really big by having the high E and the high B strings ring out throughout the whole chord. So rather than playing a C sharp minor, or C sharp 5 rather, he makes it a C sharp minor 7 by including the last two strings. And you add a bit of overdrive, it sounds really big. So he does this for all the chords, so your chords, um, instead of sounding lackluster as before, it sounds like this. That's still not quite um, sounding like the original riff, so to make it sound like the riff, you have to be a bit more uh, deliberate with your choice of harmony. So he keeps those last two strings open and ringing uh, to as accents. So I'll play the chords with the accents um, slowly for you to see how this is done. So you can see here that the hardest part of that riff is from the B to the C sharp minor, that is... The verse is pretty simple, it's the following chords, it's B, C sharp minor, E on G sharp, and A, and if I put it on in context, it sounds like this. is quite possibly just the so you have to connect that slide with the next chord which sounds like this the pre-chorus happens on the same chords in the 7th fret position so your chords are E major, E on D sharp, or in this case it implies a B major, B major, and, and A. You immediately notice that all he's doing is just changing the bass note of the chord. He keeps these two fingers constant. So as long as you keep your two fingers on the ninth fret, as in um, on uh, the D and the G strings on the ninth fret and just keep moving your index finger you, um, that's the sound you're hearing so in context it sounds like this
that solo starts with the SRV lick that uh, basically sounds like this. It's a very dissonant sounding um, riff, so uh, learn that and try to get it as musically sounding as possible. Because that sh bend from the F sharp to the G sharp, if you do it slowly like I just did over there, it sounds really bad. So um, try to target that G sharp from the F sharp instead of like going, maybe I can hit it, maybe I won't hit it. Be confident, just aim for that G sharp and um, let that confidence uh, determine the overall sound of that, of that lick. The rest of the solo is pretty easy to memorize once you remember that it's in C sharp minor pentatonic, so it sounds like this, and I'm going to play it slowly. So perhaps the hardest part of that solo is to get the band sounding confident and sounding comfortable. Well, that's it for me. Thank you for watching this video. It's been a pleasure um, teaching you this song. And if you have any comments, questions, raise or rants, please post them on the comment box below and I shall get back to you as soon as I possibly can. This is Justin, signing off.